Good day to everyone. And uh, my name is Erika Aoyoung. I'm a breast cancer survivor, and I'm 19 years old. Why are you all staring me? <laughs> 19 years old in a cancer world. All right. Tell me how you want me to start my sharing with you guys. Oh, before that, let me tell you something. My daughter always say, always share this with her friend. Um, she's doing her A level in med, uh, hoping to get into medicine, and she always tell her friends that, uh, oh, my mommy like to, you know. She enjoys standing in the podium and talking about it. <laughs> I hope she's right, and I think she's right. So tell me how you want me to start my sharing with you from... Okay. Yes? The same question, okay. I was... Um, quite successful and um, my career was quite good and I start, I got married, started family. At the age of 28, um, during one of my holiday, I discovered a lump. And this lump was actually discovered by a masseur in Bangkok. Right? So I came back I went to the doctor. They did. They removed. They did a check on me, and um, the lung was removed. And the report came out. It was benign. Very happy. Then a year later, I discovered another lung. I was not so lucky this time. And. Um, I sort of, uh, I was breastfeeding my baby girl and I discovered some discharge came out from a nipple and I thought it was the tail end of my breastfeeding. But anyway, um, I don't have a family history of uh, breast cancer. I'm the uh, history creator for this in the family. <laughs> Funny, yeah? So people was telling me that, oh, because nobody in my, I check out the family tree, nobody have a breast cancer, uh, nobody have a big C at all, and I created the history. So um, back to the breastfeeding and the discharge, like what uh, uh, the doctors and professor have said, um, I went to the doctor and the doctor said, um, let's do a checkup on that, you know. So they checked, there's a little bit of a, a, a lump, a small lump around the area, which actually, going back to the first surgery, when the doctor removed the first lump, he missed out that very small little one. Okay, but I, I, I can't blame the doctor or maybe he have done his best. He have taken up a larger area, but it's not good enough to take out the whole thing or for whatever medical reason, I can't answer that, you know. So I was quite fortunate that um, I discovered it early, but also quite sad. At the age of 30, with three kids, my youngest was only nine years old. My baby was only, I'm sorry, nine months old. Okay? So it's like um, I just stopped working, gave up my job. I thought of like starting my own business. And I don't have an insurance cover at that time because I gave up my job. I start my own family, have my own children. I am in um, insurance, I'm not covered, okay? Um, I don't have a job, I don't have income, 
but I have in-laws, I have a young husband, and I have three small kids, and I cannot afford to fall sick. That was my situation 19 years ago. I have uh, no knowledge or uh, anything about Big C at that time. So when the doctor told me that, uh, oh, I, the report came back and uh, I think you have breast cancer. So I just looked at him, oh, breast cancer. Okay, I didn't know that, oh, I'm going to die, you know that? And everyone say that breakfast, when, once you have cancer, you're going to die. So I don't know about that. And I just, oh, I just stare at the doctor and I just go back home. And it actually took me three days to realize that I'm in a big trouble. All right? So this big trouble means that who is going to take care of my in-laws, my own parents, my three kids, my young husband, my husband, how is he going to manage this? A sick wife, small kids, and parents to take care? How is he going to cope with all this? So, after locking ourselves in the room for 72 hours, we stand up and say, we have to do it ourselves. I have got no time to fall sick. I have no time to die. We went back to the doctor and we started the treatment. We took out every single saving that we have to go through the treatments. And the time is, well, I, I'm sure you guys know how I feel at the time. Okay, so to cut it short, we go through, um, like what the, earlier on the professor and doctors have spoken about the uh, treatments. I went for the treatments. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I think I missed one part. Before I was diagnosed with breast cancer, the first lump that I removed, it was benign. And the second time, the second time because of the breastfeeding, the discharge, there's a small lump, and the doctor told me that, um, Erica, you don't have to do the surgery because the earlier lump that they removed was benign. So for this one, it's 99.9% is .9 going to be denied. But I insisted because I, the, the, the discharge from my nipple doesn't bother me at that time because I thought it was the tail end. But because of that small little lumps that I have, I went to the doctor, the doctor told me that because the earlier lumps is benign, this is 99.9% .9 going to be benign. And I told the doctor, I don't want, I, I said, I don't want a time bomb to sit on me, you know. And I totally didn't give a thought of the uh, discharge, but actually that was the sign from what I, after, after that I discovered. So, when the report came back, my doc, my surgeon told me that, Erica, I'm so glad and that you insisted me to remove it for you, you know. So that's it, going back to the story. Um, I have uh, gone through the, actually, all these years I have gone through uh, lumpectomy, mastectomy, and also uh, reconstruct in a way uh, because of the posturing it gave me a lot of problem so after the uh, surgery I also um, put through the uh, radiotherapy 24 25 times and daily um, I also have a very bad experience uh, during my 
uh, radiation treatment um, for 25 days and it is normal that uh, for any human being when you are allowed to do something when you got something you are not happy with it but when you are not allowed to do something or when you don't have you are so desperate to have it I'm actually not supposed to um, wash ourselves, especially on the part of the area, uh, during the radiotherapy treatments for 25 days. But on the 23rd day, I asked the radiologist, I said, can I, can I shower? And, you know, because for so many days, really. And I, he took a look at me and said, oh, okay, you can go, you can do it. Um, he didn't give me a proper advice on how to take care of it. He's a good radiologist, and I'm sure there are good doctors, you know. But there are certain things that they don't, they are not aware. Only patients like us who gone through it knows about that, all right? Um, on the 23rd day, with the approval of the radiologist, I shower myself and I wipe my side, my, my body dry, without knowing that I'm not supposed to add pressure on it, right? Because of the radiations. So after drying my body um, in about less than 48 hours, the skin all keep tearing out. And I have to hold my arm up for 21 days because it's not healing, it tear off and the fluids on the, on the affected part. The minute I put down my arm, it just crack and just bleed, okay? So after resting it for a while, and when I try to lift up my hand, it tear off again and start bleeding. All right? So I have uh, sort of, uh, I go back to the doctors, I've gone to the pharmacies, just like, you know, year end sale, grabbing everything from the shelf in the pharmacies and the doctors. But nothing helped. All right? So, and some, some, some friends are very concerned, very helpful. They say that, oh, you know, this, uh, they, this company, they have this product, it's very good for burn, you know, and, and they say, yeah, okay, then everyone start looking and managed to grab one for me to help me. Unfo unfortunately, those things are with alcohol. <laughs> you are so happy that, you know, at midnight, at this hour, someone can just get what is supposed to be good to help me, to ease my pain. So without wasting time, we grab hold of it and apply it under my arm. And because of the alcohol, I, I am, I'm a person who don't know how to dance. I dance tango, cha-cha, sasa, all the way to the toilet. And my husband had to hold the hose to wash me off. You know, the whole thing just started bleeding out because of the alcohol. So, those who are involved in radiotherapy or nursing this, please take note on that. When you're not supposed to wash your body, please don't. If the radiotherapy is 25 days, clean your body only after 30 days. Really, for all the pain that I have gone through,